The Hawker 900 XP is the newest version of one of the very first business jet designs, and its roots can be traced back to the de Havilland DH-125, first flown in 1962. Perhaps no business jet has a better history of durability or a longer record of evolutionary performance improvement than this plane. Here is everything you need to know about the Hawker 900 XP. Stay with us to the end of the video to learn more about this aircraft. The cabin is 5 feet 9 inches or 1.75 meters tall and 6 feet or 1.82 meters wide and seats 8 people. The standard layout features five single executive seats and a three-place divan. The comfortable single seats slide and swivel and have limited recline. Legend has it that the de Havilland engineers measured the leather armchairs in private clubs in London to use as a template for the original Hawker 125's seats. The divan is not really big enough for a tall person to fully stretch out on, but it is nevertheless useful for longer trips. The belted potty in the laboratory, though a legal seat, is still best reserved for emergencies, very diminutive or the hapless passenger who draws a short straw. The lav cabinetry is slightly improved with more little drawers and niches for stowing personal products and supplies. And there's also a roomy galley with a microwave, a cold food box, a coffee maker, and a stowage for crockery, cutlery, and glasses. The cabin now employs new individual LCD screen control systems for lights, video, and audio at each seat. An LCD controlled cabin thermostat is positioned next to the boss's chair on the right side of the cabin. Two 15 inch LCD screens are mounted in the cabin, one on the forward divider and the other on the aft. The Collins Air Show and Audio Video Entertainment Systems are controlled via a 4-inch LCD sidewall mounted controllers. Additionally, a remote control is provided. One unique entertainment feature offered to passengers is a glare shield mounted cockpit camera. Looking forward through the windscreen, the camera allows passengers to see in real time what the pilots are seeing. At high speed cruise, the cabin deck angle is nearly level and only slightly nose up at long range cruise speed. Ambient noise level is low, allowing conversation at normal voice levels. A new optional layout allows you to remove the two most aft single seats and punch out the aft baggage compartment, adding a modest 10 cubic feet of stowage. Bags must still be loaded internally because there is no external baggage door. There is a 33 cubic foot baggage compartment on the right side of the cabin just as you enter the door and another 16 foot baggage compartment just ahead of the laboratory in the aft cabin. And the contents of the luggage stay warm and pressurized in the cabin and are accessible by passengers in flight. The 900 XP's flight deck features the Rockwell Collins Pro Line 21 system and is an amalgam of old and new. Around the periphery are subtle reminders that this is a legacy design, albeit a very capable one. The small overhead panel contains controls for aircraft systems all logically arranged. Large rocker switches on the overhead are effective but whisper 1970s. Showing its British design roots, the Hawker cockpit retains several oddities. For example, a set of red levers aft of the throttles are labeled HP for high pressure fuel cock and are used to introduce fuel for the start and then shut off fuel to shut down the engines. Another set of smaller levers are labeled LP for low pressure shut off cock and are used to stop fuel from entering the engine cowling in the event of a fire. The cockpit glare shield is also uniquely shaped and looks like, well, nothing but a hawker. The center pedestal and throttle quadrant host manly sized levers. Wheels and stopcocks are all extremely functional, with the exception of the master warning system light panel. The forward instrument and glare shield panels shout 21st century. The Rockwell Collins Pro Line 21 panel has four 8x10 inch active matrix LCD screens arranged two per side in a portrait format. Each pilot has their own primary flight display and multifunction display. Engine information can be displayed on any of the four large displays. 
but a conventional caution and warning lights panel has been retained. Automatic flight guidance system controls are well placed on a glare shield panel. The ProLine 21 uses a dual file server and dual cursor control panels that allow either pilot to pull up any approach or taxi charts in the electronic flight bag database with zoom capability on either display. Standard on the 900 XP are all the usual bells and whistles. Dual attitude heading reference system, traffic alert and collision avoidance system, enhanced ground proximity warning system, turbulence detection weather radar and dual GPS. The avionics suite also includes dual FMS 6000 flight management system, engine indicating system and an integrated flight information system. A standard single file server unit provides an electronic charts capability with own ship position. Purchase of a second unit gives a chartless cockpit capability. The 900 XP can be dispatched with an inoperative APU without operational restrictions, with battery power sufficient to launch from austere fields. Hydraulically actuated nose wheel steering is controlled by a hand wheel on the left hand side wall. Up to 45 degrees of steering is available, allowing for tight turns on the congested ramp. The hand wheel lacks a centering feature, and because of this, pilots could initially have difficulty determining the commanded steering angle. Talking about performance, the 900 XP is powered by two next generation Honeywell Aerospace TFR 731-50R engines with a TBO of 6,000 hours and with each one producing 4,660 pounds of thrust. This combination is able to push the aircraft to a maximum speed of 452 knots, a maximum cruise speed of 430 knots, and up to a maximum cruising altitude of 41,000 feet or 12.5 kilometers, with an average hourly fuel burn of 257 gallons or 973 liters per hour. The plane has a maximum range of 2,950 nautical miles which is 3,400 miles or 5,460 kilometers. The plane can take off from 5,000 feet or 1,525 meters, has a maximum rate of climb of 3,415 feet or 1,040 meters per minute, and a landing distance of 2,300 feet or 700 meters, all while maintaining a full fuel payload of 1,620 pounds or 735 kilograms. Before being discontinued in 2012, the base purchase price for the 900 XP was 16 million before options. But today, the price for a used model is four to seven million dollars, and the charter price ranges from 4,000 to 5,000 dollars per hour. While the total fixed cost is roughly 200,000 dollars to 300,000 dollars per year, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $3,000 to $3,600. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching.